excited today. I'm so elated today. Amen. That we have a gentleman. Amen. That come by. Amen. To see us. Amen. To come by. Amen. To have a few words. Amen. This young man. Amen. We have been. Amen. Knowing him for a very long time. Amen. I can't go back to the date and time. Amen. Amen. But we're just so excited to have him to be a part of this service that will come. Amen. And say a few words. Amen. He has served in so many capacities throughout our state, throughout our city, throughout the government. Amen. Working. Amen. Through to make a difference, to make a change for the better of the people. Hallelujah. He has given him Self, his life, amen, amen to, to make, make a difference in society. Hallelujah. Now, I heard somebody say, if you see something wrong, it's up to you to speak out, to speak up, to say something so that you can make a difference. Is that all right? Amen. This young man that is getting ready to come to this platform, amen, he credits our founder, my father, the late. Amen. Superintendent Rochester Rogers has been very instrumental in the early days of his life. Amen. And we're so happy, amen, that we're still partnering together. We're still acquainted together, amen, to make a difference in the community, amen, and in this state, amen. And he is one of the candidates, amen, in our city, amen, that is running for mayor of our city. Amen. And we're just going to give him an opportunity at this time to come and share and have a few words. Will you get on those horns? Will you clap your hands? Amen. Will you wave something and receive? Amen. Candidate for mayor of North Little Rock, Arkansas, Brother Tracy Steele. God bless you. These are the day that the Lord has made, and we should rejoice and be glad in it. I am so glad to be here. I am so glad to be here in God's house. Yes, sir. You know, you don't have to have a roof over your head. As a matter of fact, this is how we have to used to do it before we had these beautiful structures. So I am so glad to be here to be able to worship and not, not have to zoom my way, way through the word today. today. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much. I am glad to be here. Glad to see so many familiar faces. I can even recognize some of your horns. All right. <laughs> Good to see Mother, Mother Rogers. I love you. Last time I saw it, you looked more like Sister Rogers. I think she's getting younger and younger. So good to see you and the family, June, Dad, and just the rest of us. And I tell you what, I want you to blow your horn for your wonderful pastor. He's doing such a great job. He got a word anywhere he sees you. Whether it's here at the church, whether it's in your line to buy groceries, he's got a word from the Lord. And I appreciate him. I appreciate his friendship. We do have a responsibility. It's an important time, and I won't belabor that. This election is critical, and it is our responsibility. You know, I was growing up down at New Hope in Glenview. We had a man named Pastor Don A. Kelly. Yes, sir. He appointed me over the youth department, a position that I love. And when I started to get involved in public service, and I went to work for a man named Bill Clinton, who was governor here of Arkansas, I, I, I came to him and I said, Pastor, I'm sorry I had to miss a service or two because of what I was doing on my job. And I'll never forget, he told me, he said, you don't have to apologize. He said, part of being a good Christian is being a good citizen. Is being a good citizen. And so we need to be good citizens and make sure we find our way to the polls. It's an important election and we need change not only at the top but all the way down to the bottom of that ballot. We need change. 
We need change to improve our communities. One of the changes that we need is it's time we bring our community together. If we haven't heard from God in 2020, there's been a year that we will never forget. I don't know what it's going to take, but I think God is reaching out and telling us we've got to come together across racial lines, community to community. You know, North Little Rock is not too big. We should just be one big neighborhood. When anything happens good in one part of the North Little Rock, we should all celebrate. But one thing I can promise you, we're going to leave the results up to God. And whatever God says, that's what we're going to do and follow. My wife always tells me to keep praying. I am glad we have Cassandra here today. Cassandra Spears. She's a She's up praying before I even get up every morning. I appreciate her. I appreciate her. Some of my team here that's been following us each and every day. But I tell you, I like to close with something I heard years ago that really motivated me. Now, Superintendent Rogers, as your pastor said, had a tremendous impact on my life, all the way from a, a little kid. But I won't go back that far. When I first decided to run for public office in the late 90s, I ran for state representative. And I can remember into running into Superintendent Rogers, and I went up to him, and I always uh, liked to pass Rogers, make him feel good. So I said, Coach Rogers, how you doing? <laughs> He loved that. He loved coaching us. But we were young men. But he always had a word when he coached us. If it wasn't that man, I wouldn't have developed my skills and developed my character to go on to Rice University with a full-paid scholarship. Amen. Amen. So I owe him. But one thing he told me in that conversation is he said I heard you were running I saw your size he said I'm so proud of you he didn't give me a long speech he said one thing that I will never forget he said stay with God stay with God I was so pleased to hear him say that because he said stay that means he knew I was already there But he said, stay with God. And that is what I have always tried to do. I'm not perfect. I'm still a work in progress. But one thing I can promise you, if I have the opportunity to be your mayor, I'm going to stay with God. God bless you.
shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that preceded out of the mouth. Hallelujah. And if there ever was a time that the word needs to be heard from the White House to our house, it's now. Amen. We need a word from the Lord that will give us directions, that will show us, that will lead us into the right path that we should take. Hallelujah. And today, we have a man of God that is getting ready to come. Amen. He is one of the sons of our church. And the next voice you will hear will be that of Elder Frederick Quick. Which is still made this message easy. He's a law worker. It is political and government. And we need good people. We need good men. Give honors to our pastor, Pastor Rogers, First Lady. Mother Rogers, my First Lady. Just a quick and all of God's people. It's always a pleasure to be in your presence. And this morning, I'm honored to be a part of this service. You know, I don't know about you, but it's something about worship that does something for me. We live in a time when we need to worship. We need to worship God. I don't know about you, but when I leave home, I have no greater purpose to give God some praise and worship. When I look at where he's brought me from on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, Saturday, I just want to get up and come to church and tell God, thank you. Oh, bless his name. Come to say, thank you for how far you brought me. Thank you because you never left me. I come to give God some praise. It's nice to see you. I'm glad you're here. But when I walk in the door and drive on the parking lot, I really came to give God some praise. It's nice for you to be here, but it's time for worship. Oh, bless his name. I didn't come God to ask God for something this morning. I didn't come to say, Lord, will you heal? Lord, will you deliver? I didn't come to say, Lord, I need this. Oh, I need that. I come to give God some praise. It's time to worship. Worship comes from such a deep place in us. It is such a powerful outpouring of God's spirit in us. It represents such love gratitude and devotion that it's hard to describe it. Oh, bless his name. And if I can say in my own words how much gratitude and devotion I have for the Lord, it may be just simply God is a great God and he deserves a great praise. Bishop is a personal and intimate thing. It could be done most of anywhere or at any time or in any place or in a situation. The disciples were worshiping on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Ghost fell and drove them to the streets to acknowledge Christ Jesus. Oh, bless his name. Isaiah was in the temple worshiping. Worshiping when God appeared to him and forgave him his sins and called him to be a prophet for the people. It was in the act of worship that the disciples 
recognized who Jesus was at the table in Luke, the 24th chapter. It was Mary sitting before Jesus, clearly worshiping when he informed Martha that she had chosen the good thing, something that would not be taken away from her in Luke the 10th chapter in the 47th verse, something special that was the time for worship. Oh, bless his name. In our worst situations, we can still find time to worship. In the Philippian prison, oh, bless his name, while they're back were oozing blood from being bitten. Paul and Silas worship God. Acts the 16th chapter and the 25th verse. The Lord told the woman, the Samaritan woman at Jacob's well, those who worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. John 4, 24, that is with the inner the inner total reality and total totality of our being. Your spirit, not just your lips or your bodies going through the motions, true worship must be in spirit. That is engaging the whole heart. If there's no real passion for God, there is no true worship. At the same time, worship must be in truth. That is being properly informed. Unless you have a knowledge of God, there is no true worship. Both are necessary for satisfying and honoring God in worship. Bishop, without truth leads to a shadow over emotion. Oh, bless his name and over emotional experience that could be compared to a high. As soon as the emotion is over, as soon as the fever cools, as soon as the bishop dies, bishop. Oh, bless his name, goes away. Oh, bless his name. Worship is to exalt God as we know him through his word. To humble ourselves and recognize and celebrate the greatness of God's. Oh, bless his name. Through our words and our actions. There are three benefits of worship. Worship gets our focus on God. Worship helps us understand God. Worship helps us build our confidence in God. It's time to give God some worship. It's time to give God some praise. Oh, bless his name. I don't want to get excited because my brother my brother has already started, Tricia. I should have let Stacey stand up for a little while longer. But let me say, as I studied the Word, as I studied the Word, I began to understand. Oh, bless his name. I began to understand the importance of understanding the text. You see, there are words that are spelled the same way but have different meanings. Matthew 28 and 18 says, And Jesus came and spake, Oh, bless his name. And to them he said, All power. The Greek word is ecstasy, which means authority. Acts, the first chapter in the eighth verse says, he shall receive power, spelled the same way. Oh, bless his name. The Greek word is dunamis, where you get the word dynamite. Oh, bless his name. In Ephesians, the sixth chapter, and the tenth verse is, Finally, my brethren, 
be strong in the Lord and in his power. The Greek word is Kratos, where you get demonstrative power. Spelled the same way, but have a different meaning. Over in Luke, the eighth chapter and the fourth through the eighth verse, Jesus tells the story of a seesaw. Words are important. Over in Luke, the fourth chapter and the eighth verse, the story is talking about four types of seed. I'm going to tell you that I am the sower. The seed is the word of God. The people are the sower. All the seeds, all the sowers, the sowers are men of God. The seed, El Bless's name, is sowed by the same sower. And all the soil gets the same seed. The reason, the reason this story captured my attention is I've been on the new members orientation for 10 or more years. And in 10 or more years, people come and people go. You won't understand this, but many times, when I start praying for them and concern about who they are and what they are going to do, they just disappear. Oh, bless his name. This story helped me to understand and see what God has in mind. Oh, bless his name. They don't stop by and say, so long, they don't come shake your hand, they don't send you a letter. You take time out to put things in place to show people concern, but they just disappear. The story helped me understand because Jesus said everybody ain't gonna stay and everybody that stay ain't gonna do the right thing. I think you can relate to this in our present situation. Everybody that say ain't gonna do the right thing. I'm thinking you all know you've been here long enough. You should know something. But you know I had a brother that was in one of my old home churches. Uh, my old home church and he had been in the church three or four years and he didn't know it was a Pentecostal or homeless church. Oh bless his name. Go with me as you will to Luke the 8th chapter and the 5th verse. Jesus tells the story of parable of the seesaw. I guess you could say this is going to be a narrative message. Only in Luke the 8th chapter it says, A sower went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed, some fell by the wayside. And it was trotted down, and the vows, the fowls of the air devoured it. It said, Some fell upon rock. And soon as it sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. It said, and some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. And others fell on good ground and sprang up and brought forth fruit a hundredfold. And when he had said these things, his disciples asked him, what might this parable be? He said unto them, you are given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. Now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. Oh, bless his name. Those by the wayside are they that hear and then Coming to the devil and taking 
away the word out of their mouth, lest they should believe and be saved. They upon the rocks, which are they which, when they heard, received the word with joy. Oh, bless his name. And these have no roots, which were wild to leave, and in time of temptation, they went away. And those that fell among thorns are they which, when they heard, go forth and are choked with the cares and riches and pleasures of this world, and bring it forth no fruit. That part helped me to understand a lot of my associates who I grew up in the church, who when they became successful and prosperous, they fell away from the faith. Oh, bless his name. It says, but that on good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, kept it and bring it forth good fruit. Oh, bless his name. The key to spiritual growth, the key to spiritual growth is keeping your feet in the right soul. The word is a seed and you are the soul. Seeds have three things. Three seeds need three things to grow. They need water, moisture, oxygen, and the proper temperature. Seeds are the word of God, water, oxygen, and temperature. Water is the spirit of God's presence and the spirit of God dwelling within us. The seeds need oxygen. It's amazing that water, oxygen, and the proper temperature are the things that are needed for spiritual growth. Oh, bless his name. The seed needs oxygen. It's amazing that God can breathe on you. Even though you are under the dirt, when you're covered, God can breathe life into your life. If you are jacked up, dirty, life in sin. If you all messed up, God can breathe a breath of life on you. Then it says that you need the proper temperature. Some of you will never grow because you hang around dead churches. It's too cold. I'm sorry. I can't go to a dry, dead church. I need to be somewhere where people are giving God some praise. I need to be somewhere where they are giving God some glory. If you like a quiet church, if you like a conservative church where nobody is saying nothing and the pastor lectures, fine. If that's good for you, fine. But I need to be where there is a fire. I need to be where the people can give God some praise. Where I can raise my hands and tell God thank you. I need to be able to lift my hands and say thank you. A place where I can magnify the God I need to be in a place where the temperature is hot. Somebody say it's hot up in the air. By and by, I will see Jesus in that land over there. I'm so glad that my Redeemer lives because he lives in me. For a seed to germinate, that seed needs to break the coat. Some of us, in order to become what God wants us to be, you're going to have to break the coat. You're covering that facade, that image, that mask. You are so concerned 
with impressing your friend that you can't break the curtain. Can't stop pretending, oh bless his name. When you wake up in your mind to give Jesus some praise, to give him some glory, to make him the head of your life, you won't care about what your friends are talking about. I submit to you this morning that you can receive the Holy Ghost, healing, deliverance from oppression, salvation for your family, and any other divine blessing if you would just hear the word of God. Oh, bless his name. There are people here who could tell you or testify that their entire lives have been turned around because they heard the word of God. Jesus said in John, the 14th chapter, in the 6th verse, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto me but by me. I want you to know you can listen to whoever you want to. There are about a thousand different religious organizations that were formed by individuals that use their own personal interpretation of God. But Jesus is still saying, I am the way, the truth, and the light. I want you to know that 700 years before Jesus was born, Isaiah wrote his resume. Isaiah said 400 years before Jesus was born, he said, I was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities, the chastising of our peace is up on him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we have sinned and come short, and all have sinned and gone astray, but we have turned away one to his own way, but the Lord has laid on himself our iniquities for us all. I want you to know that Jesus is letting somebody know this morning that whatever it is that you are going through in your life, as I come to the close, God has an answer. And I submit to you that you can still receive the Holy Ghost, healing, deliverance from oppression, salvation for your family, and any other design blessing if you would just hear the word of God. I'm going to pray for you because before I like to close, I'd like to give you an opportunity before I close to accept Jesus as your personal Savior. Romans 10 and 9 says, If thou wilt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart, thou shalt be saved. Love flows because God is in control. A church where God is really real. Hi, my name is Dennis Rogers, pastor here at the Greater New Bible Way Church of God in Christ. I would like to welcome you to our services.